Hey, this is Alvin, and welcome to the Kickstart Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and domain investing strategies to help grow your business. In today's episode, our guest is none other than Scotland-based Tommy Butler, a longtime geodomain developer and serial entrepreneur of a growing number of lead generation and tourism websites, such as Glasgow.com and HelicopterHires.com, to name a few. Today, Tommy and I discuss how a t-shirt business led to domain investing and development, the challenges and rewards in developing international tourism websites, how his company harnesses the power of technology to scale their geodomain development efforts. And last but not least, we're talking thoughts on the future of geodomain development and investing opportunities that lie ahead. So with that, Tommy, welcome and thank you for making time to join us today. Thank you very much, Alvin, for inviting me to the show. And um, yeah, it's a total pleasure. It's a- been listening to your podcast. Um, basically, I've been in the domain, g- domain game for 22 years now, um, which makes me an old timer. And I'm obviously a geodomainer. I love <laughs> um, geodomains because one thing that you have with geodomains is loyalty. And um, with it, no matter the size of the town or the city, you have a core group of people that will automatically type in. The, the .com domain name um, because that's where they come from. That's a uh, place of birth or whatever else. Or if they're an expat or, you know, um, they're overseas, you will always get pure 100% organic traffic um, with a pure geo.com. And that's why I love geo domain names. Nice. Nice. So then uh, I guess kind of jumping in here. So how did you get introduced to domain investing and development? I actually got into it by accident. Alvin, um, <laughs> I, I let every um, person who grew up with the family, I went out and bought a computer and spent about two hours on the phone trying to even get it built. And I looked at it and went, I better learn this business um, because I realized that um, it was the way forward. And um, I came across one of, um, one of the old tech websites called domain or websites called igoldrush.com, which is still online, which was run by Edward, Edward, Edwin. Um, and it was all about domain names. And I went, oh, what's a domain name? And um, registered six domain names. And um, I sold one within two weeks for uh, £1,200. It cost me £100 per name back then. Wow, and I sold was one that a .com name? That was a .co.uk. Um, wow. But that that gave me that light bulb moment where wow, <laughs> within two weeks I've earned eleven hundred pounds, which you know, um, twenty two <laughs> years ago was fantastic. So Great. another one was um, like five six weeks after that, I was driving along the motorway. As you, you know, you you have you call the the American billboards, and the Scottish government were running a a drug awareness campaign called knowthescore.info and as a demeanor I looked why are they using the .info so got up to the house logged onto the computer discovered that the knowthescore.com was available for registration and <laughs> registered the .com knowing fine well that I would get the traffic um, oh, wow. three months after registering the .com I get an offer from an American firm to um, buy the domain off me for eighteen thousand dollars, and that sort of went. I just went wow. And um, what I realised and what I was told was, um, no, the score is like for credit rating agencies in the states. It's a well-known phrase. It's no, your you know. So that's what it was used for, and that was basically me really starting to get into domaining. We when you start getting one or two sales like that, it just you know, it's a, you know, it's a good way of starting a business. <laughs> so then, um, let's see here. Well, the original domains that you purchased, then those domains, I guess, were those hand reg or you hadn't really even, I guess, pulled up on the expired auction as of yet. No, that was, they were all hand registered domain names and they were, 
99% of my domain names were .co.uk because obviously being from the UK, um, that's the market that, that, that I went into right. um, with a small percentage of being .coms. I mean, I guess how many how many domains, obviously having like success, domains did you start then registering uh, and then what was your portfolio size? What did it grow My portfolio to? size at one stage was about 5,500 domains, wow. um, which was... Um, because like every domainer her way back then, you were buying up domains for every day, every different kind of business. Would it be mortgages, loans, finance, car hire? Um, I, I used to own a lot of heavy engineering domain names as well. And hmm. I just basically went right across the board. Like every domainer I think was doing that. They were hedging their bets. And, but also one of the things I started doing was buying up Glasgow names, you know, um, and it was like buying up like Glasgow pubs, Glasgow clubs, Glasgow restaurants. And I discovered um, that when we were doing that and building the sites, we started getting a lot more traffic. And I discovered uh, what I call it cluster domaining is when you basically own a lot of names relating to a geographical area then you're going to uh -huh. always, every one of those domains is going to get a percentage of each of the traffic. And then it allows you to buy the better names um, for that city. And then eventually that was the reason. Um, we're doing that. We eventually um, managed to buy Glasgow.com. Interesting. So then from that cluster domaining experience, so when you speak of clustering, you're meaning like, let's just say something like Glasgow shops or Glasgow jewelers or exactly. So it's almost like geo service. So yes. whatever the local service would have been at that moment in time. I call, well, it's basically um, hyper local, um, you know, and if you're at that level before hyper local became in vogue, um, that's what we discovered was that it was basically well people were going global we were going hyper local because we realized that that's what most of your market was going to be so then let's take a step back then because as you started registering these names so what line of business were you in and you kind of stumbled up on this domain investing success when I, I was um, when I got into the domain business I was actually running a gallery and a t-shirt business in Glasgow and I was sort of getting bored with the that the business. Um, the T-shirt business, I, I was getting to that age where upon, you know, when you're younger, t t doing T-shirts and stuff like that, you're in vogue. But also, I realised that the fumes and the chemicals with regards to T-shirt printing were harming my lungs, and I decided to basically just do a 100% um, career change. And... Um, move online and you know it was it was hmm. bold and um, doing it and i went and learned a course on html and i started to learn about the business and then i got more and more into domains and seo and strategies and i think now um i love it when i work on a strategy and i can see it coming together how long take you to transition out of the t-shirt business in time in development I would probably say it took about eight months um, because when I sort of um, started the domains and started having those two early sales, um, I just went 100% into the domain business and, um, you know, put 100% reading up on it, understanding stats. And it's not just a case of understanding stats. One of the things that I love is understanding people's habits. And if you understand people's habits, that's far right. better than SEO. Um, and, the, you know, when you understand people's habits, watching it for those small trends, then sooner or later they become um, in vogue. And I used to sit and look at um, IP addresses, logging into one of our websites for Glasgow and then logging into another one of our sites and following the IP addresses. So we sort of started seeing developing patterns with the people of Glasgow with regards to what their shopping habits would be, what, what their nighttime habits would be. And we're having a lot of sites and following all those IP addresses and everything else. It just gave us a, a magnificent amount of data that no one else could get at that moment in time. That makes sense. And so, so from that standpoint, then, I guess, like, moving forward, like, what was your first development project? 
Well, our first development project was we used to, <laughs> the way that we started up, we started up a web design business a way, way, way back. And that was called localwebsites.co.uk. And we, if we were doing work for, uh, say, a coach company in Glasgow, um, they would have their own name. But what we would go and do is then register to see if the names like Glasgow Bus Hire was available, Glasgow Coach Hire was available, because uh. we would register those names to get traffic for that client. And we discovered that, um, the you know, we were doing a lot of work for like five different coach companies. Each one of them was different. And we realized that building up that network over a period of time, um, how valuable the domain names was coming, but the traffic, because one of the things that I realized earlier on, that Google um, was, it was never really a, ever a search engine because it got mm -hmm. venture capitalist funding and that meant that it was going to have to do advertising. And I would argue with people that it was never a search engine. It was an advertising platform because if you get hedge funding, you need to make money. And the only way Google was going to make money was by sooner or later running adverts. And, you know, I was I was spot on with that um, 20 years ago before even Google um, decided to even think about doing adverts. That was a long-term goal. But what Google done was Google understood people's habits. It got everybody drawn into the simple search button. And that's how it became such a global success. Interesting. And so then going from that first project so that you kind of got bit by the bug in yeah. developing. So then I guess in that first project, how did you, I guess, were you using some sort of ads or how were you, how were you making revenue? Were you making revenue? Well, back then the revenue, um, because we had a web design business that was bringing in the revenue um, with regards to it. Because back then there wasn't really an awful lot of affiliate marketing. There wasn't a lot, um, you know, when we would go and see hotels um, in Glasgow, they didn't understand what we were doing. A lot of people just didn't get it. And they, just like today, some of them still don't get it. Um, so we, we sort of made our money flipping the names, buying the names and flipping them. And we had certain names that we'd like to buy and flip. And then we had other names which were part of our projects for our long-term gain as part of our strategy. And I've always believed that if you've got a strategy in the domain business, then in a plan that will work long-term. And the sort of stuff that we done was a long-term plan. You know, um, it's just that we realized that um, when we tried to buy Glasgow.com, uh, it took us two years of negotiations. Um, we not. Um, Nat Cohen, who's one of the world's probably top top debaters. And then um, eventually Nat sold us it, probably because I would phone him regularly and ask him if he would sell us it. And eventually <laughs> sold us it. And that gave us one network because we had basically the A to Z um, of all the Glasgow names. And Glasgow.com was the final piece of that jigsaw. So once we got Glasgow.com, that was what I call level one. We had one, net, one network completed, nice. i.e., the strategy, we own the names, and if you own the names, that's what it's all about. You can, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to build them, but if you've got those names and they're yours, that's strategy one. Then I looked at strategy two, and strategy two was, right, we own Glasgow, we own all the names related to Glasgow, or the ones that I was interested in. We then looked at the Scottish towns that were near Glasgow, and so we started buying them up um, because... Glasgow's the main hub for the west mm -hmm. coast of Scotland. So we started buying up the other town names like eastcobride.com, cumbernauld.com, helmsborough.com, large.com, saltcoats.com, uh, claybank.com, cumbernauld.com, and a few others. So that took a few years buying up the town names because not everyone wants to sell you. Um, <laughs> geo, pure geo domain names. And so I'm happy with the development that we got, the, the names, the structure. We, so we've done that. And then there's with the next level up, which I call the Scotland Network. So the Scotland Network, we own names like um, scottishweather.com, scottishholiday.com, um, you know, scottishtour.com, all nice holiday related names. So we're buying those names. That gave us three different networks with three different structures, but each one geared 
towards different levels of people. So we had the hyper-local one, which was the cities, the, the Glasgow.com. Then we had the Scottish Towns Network, which is the population of those towns. And then we have and the Scotland Wide ones. how many towns? But at the moment, I think we've got 13 towns in Scotland. Um, I think 12 is .coms, which makes us probably the biggest geo owners um, wow. in Scotland and probably the UK um, sort of thing. So I'm pleased with that. Um, they will be getting launched this year with brand new designs. And we've got all the Twitter accounts for 80% of those names, the pure geo Twitter account, just like we've got at Glasgow. We've also got at Cumbernauld, at East Coast Bride, at Largs, at uh, Helensborough. So we like create, we like getting the the social structures to match the domains um, as well, and that takes a wee bit of time. So then, in terms of uh, I guess development, so so you developed um, the hyper niche little site or the cluster. First, now, how long did it take you to develop? I guess then it takes. I would say the the way that I've re, they've built the system now. It's uh, it takes us about two years to build a city dot com domain. And I'll tell you the reason for that is that you can just build a site. Um, and take the stock photography and stuff like that. But we Glasgow, last year, I walked every street in Glasgow where all the businesses were with my digital camera taking photographs of every retailer and business in Glasgow. And that taught me an awful lot about the city, which, you know, I thought I knew, but, you know, it was only when you walk the streets and you then see all the local businesses. And one of the things that I, I learned was that you've got to know the inside and outside of your city um, from that perspective. Because at the end of the day, um, every one of those retailers um, and businesses really, um, it's your job, you could say, as a deal owner of that city name to try and get them business and try and get the pubs, the clubs, the restaurants, local business as well. So that's, you know, it's a, it's a big task for a, a, a business to do. Um, sort of thing and being a small business owner myself it's um, I just love it when somebody tells me that um, you know they've had business for the sort of stuff that they've been doing interesting so then it, so with it taking a longer runway in terms of site development so assuming during that time that you're doing site development you're actually still flipping domains yes uh -huh. totally it's um, you've got to keep flipping the names to build the development because it's like being a, a small business development takes a lot of time you know um, the development we have done in the past everything was purpose built PHP and everything else and um, we decided um, last year of the you know to move everything across to WordPress and I am so loving WordPress mm -hmm. Um that it's so flexible, it's, it's, it's brilliant to use. And I think most domainers have been waiting probably the last 20 years to see all the developments with product products like WordPress and what that can do, because it really allows every domainer to basically turn their domain names instead of into parking, build them and develop them out in the actual businesses. And that's what should be happening with some of the fantastic names that are there. Um, I've got a very good team based in India um, that have been ways for the last 17 years. And they have, wow. we, we have learned um, all the flaws with doing mass, mass development because you learn a lot of things when you're doing stuff that no one else was really doing. So um, a mass when we're talking about mass development, we're not talking about a three-page or a five-page website. We're talking about you know, sometimes a 50-page website, a 100-page website. Um, that was the sort of level we were um, doing things for. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. And sometimes we got it right, sometimes we got it wrong. And when we got it wrong, we would start again uh, from scratch. And, um, you know, uh, we worked on a shopping uh, project that took us two years to build and we ended up scrapping that because it was, 
it was uh, meant for e-commerce retailers, but it was far too complicated. The back end system, I understood it, but it was far too complicated for the normal um, shopkeeper who was basically finding it hard to probably even run just a basic website. So we had to go back to basic. Ah, interesting. And we scrapped that, and we, we still own some fantastic shop names, but that's one where we'll, we'll put on the back burner while we're getting everything else done. Most of the Glasgow names that we own, the only were all hand-registered domain names, um, which I'm really pleased about. Every single one, nice. apart from the main one, which was the .com. So I absolutely love the fact that we own glasgoshop.com, glasgoshops.com, glasgoshopping.com, um, glasgotaxi.com, glasgointernational.com. Most of these names um, were all hand regis. Um, so, you know, it's the geo names, um, the pure geo names that have cost us money. And um, But most of my names have been um, normally hand regis. And I still... Um, still continue today to pick up very, very nice names that I'm surprised that people have let drop um, uh, sort of thing, you know. And um, I would say that my portfolio today, um, although it's a lot less, um, the names that I've now got today are far more superior than what I had probably 19 years ago. Interesting. So then at like what range were you paying back then? For the pure geos, well, an average pure geo back then was about three to four thousand pounds for a Scottish um, Scottish town, um, sort of thing. Or you know, depending who was the the seller, you could you could be lucky to buy one for a thousand or fifteen hundred. Um, but the average cost was about oh, between wow. three and five thousand. Yeah, so I picked up a couple for a thousand pound a time or fifteen hundred. Um, others cost me three thousand. One or two cost me five thousand, and I still think that was an absolute bargain back then. Because I keep track on certain ones that that have sold. And if you take a small Scottish town called Melrose dot com, uh, well Melrose dot com mm -hmm. sold to a New York jewelers, and I think it sold for seventy five thousand dollars. That was about two three years ago. So there's and that, there's some. Um, domain names that I've sold for, you know, tens of thousands Scottish Scottish ones. I've got my own price that I put on the geo names. Um, as soon as I buy a geo.com Scottish Scottish one, um, as soon as I look at it and add it to our portfolio, it's automatically got a price between twenty five and fifty five thousand, depending on the area and the geographical the, ge the geographical location and the population. Um, and that, I think that's cheap when you consider the the value of what that domain brings to a town or a city. Now, that makes sense. That makes total sense. Uh, so then, like, in terms of getting the pure geos as well as the cluster uh, sites, like, how long did it take you to become profitable with the sites? Um, well, we were profitable probably within the first um, eight months of – due to the fact we're flipping domains. Um, oh, that's right. You know, and it's um, as long as we can keep at that sort of level of the developing and the developing and the, de the, de and the continued developing, we, we have reinvested it all back back into buying better quality names. Um, you know, names that you wish you would have been around in 95, <laughs> 96. Mm -hmm. So we look at the... The, the the money that we make, we plow it back into getting a name that's part of our portfolio to increase the value of a portfolio. Um, and sometimes it's very hard because when you some if you you get if you get someone that's got the same sort of passion as what we have for Glasgow, and they're sitting in their town name, they're very reluctant to sell it. And uh, so you get to that stage where um, sometimes you've got to walk away because of how much they're asking for it. And then sometimes you go, right, okay, we've sold this, so we'll buy that. So I tend to have a policy where if I've sold something else, I'll go and buy another one or two geo names to add to a portfolio um, and to continue doing that. The development is probably 
the the hardest thing for us to do because you've got to really do your homework with regards to the 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 town of the city um, that you're developing and most of the Scottish domain names I've had I've actually went, went to every one of the towns and walked around all the streets again taking photographs of all the local businesses and sometimes what I do is I go back down every year since we've bought that name and take photographs again of all the local businesses and one of the things that we start noticing is the trends of what streets are very, very successful, what streets are very, um, how to put it, they're not good for business. And that's one of the things that we have noticed in Glasgow as well. We Every year, taking photographs of all the different businesses in Glasgow, we can see the trends of what streets are very, very good, what shopping locations are really, really good. Um, and it gives us a better understanding. But once you've done that for like 15 years, you then have a sort of history of the city when you, you can put up on the website maybe 10 years, 15 years of every one of those businesses so you can see over a period of time the, the changes that the city is having slowly. Um, and so the photographs that we have now got, um, we're planning to put them on the new Glasgow site that we're building, showing the history in the last 16 years of all the different businesses that were on that street. So we, we scrapped the, the last Glasgow site which was getting six and a half million viewers. And because I believe that the new one that we're building, we're aiming to get 20 million viewers a year. And that's because of the the knowledge that we learned um, when I was out walking. We used to own 150 Glasgow domains. And it got so ridiculous with the names that we owned that um, we decided to cut it in half by about 70 domains. And... We then looked at the patterns of putting each each one of into groups as well. And I'll give you an example of that. So we own glasgownightlife.com. So in the Glasgow Nightlife category, we own glasgowpub.com, glasgowpubs.com, glasgowclub.com, glasgowbar.com, glasgowrestaurant.com, and glasgowrestaurants.co.uk. So that cluster became its own little cluster as part of Glasgow.com. So that's one network. With regards to shopping, we own GlasgowShop.com, GlasgowShops.com, GlasgowShopping.com, GlasgowShops.co.uk, GlasgowFlorist.com, GlasgowJeweler.com, GlasgowJewelers.co.uk, I think. So that became a sort of shopping um, network. So we learned to sort of break down and we got rid of a lot of names um, like Glasgow Undertakers, Glasgow Dentists, which are very high and very good on um, PPC and stuff like that. But we just felt that we had to focus on the main um, sort of business ones, Glasgow International, we use for our airport site, glasgotaxi.com, glasgotransport.com. Uh, GlasgowSubway.com. So we, we bought names that we see that are really, really good for um, the businesses that we are targeting. And so that's, so literally, it's because, you know, because I start thinking about just a town and the number of businesses that are in it. And I go, man, you could actually go pretty crazy or get a large, you could just balloon a portfolio without knowing it just by going after all the businesses rather than going after likely the most profitable ones. Yeah. We, we started to realize that the names that we were buying up were basically hospitality, tourism, um, ah. sort of businesses. And the, that sort of enabled us to look at the structure because we have got a lot of hotel names as well. So what would happen is the, we would then realize when we were buying domains that we had um, other networks growing from our Glasgow network. Um, so if you take, like, we own um, Glasgow Car Hire. So with Glasgow Car Hire, we would also own um, a few other car hire names. That became an other, another network. We own GlasgowHoliday.com. Um, so with GlasgowHoliday.com, 
we started realising that we were buying up other holiday names. So after they become into like groups of four or five, that starts becoming a little network. And, um, you know, as you only realise it when you start putting them into groups and then you go, right, that works with that one, so that's been successful. So if we pick up another two names relating to that, um, i.e. term holiday or hotels, um, that's the way to do it. And that's one of the things that we started doing um, two years ago. We moved away from the .co.uk extension and more into the .com, and we focused on European um, holiday locations. And the names that I've got now, I am, which we have basically picked up for registration fees, um, are, you know, I cannot believe that I've managed to pick these names up. <laughs> so and I can give you some of them, like um, magalufhotel.com, registration fee. Picked it up as a drop. And then next door to Magaluf is Santa Ponza. So we picked up Santa Ponza Hotel, registration fee. So that was $10. And I'll have this... I can't understand hoteliers who own a hotel in these locations and spend 10 million, 20 million pounds on a hotel, but they don't own a name that's associated with the place where the people are going to. And this is one of the, the reasons why the hotels are in such dire straits because they've been getting the wrong information for certain people. Um, and it just seems absolutely crazy. One of the best domain names that we got um, was it's in the Grand Canaries called Miss Palmas Hotel. And um, we found, you know, we got it as again as a ten pound registration. And when I went on to archive and discovered that it was a hotel that owned it for twelve years, um, we thought the hotel had made a mistake and let it drop by accident. So we phoned the hotel, and the manager proceeded to tell us that it came in from head office to get rid of their domain name, and head office were giving them a page on the company website. And I went, that's suicide. So we picked <laughs> up we picked up this domain name and straight away we were getting their hotel bookings, we were getting their airport transfers. And, I, you know, this is what happens when someone gets um, ill-advised in what to do with regards to their business. And, you know, it's, um, it's just crazy that, you know, that um, businesses let names like that go, which get you know, pure organic traffic. Um, so, yeah, I love it when big businesses drop the names like that um, and we pick them up. Like A couple of weeks ago, I just picked up LorettemarHotel.com, which is a major um, tourist location in Europe. And um, it, it beggars belief that, um, that you know, companies are allowing these names to drop, you know, trading companies, big international companies are allowing these names to drop. Man, that is that is amazing, especially, like I said, for the, the story about the, the hotel that let it drop and then you brought it to their attention and then it was still just like, yeah, we don't need that. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you can't, you, you know, there is no point in trying to help them because if they, you know, the trouble is, is that they've been told that they don't need that. And in fact, another one of the names that I went to, the person turned around and told me that they didn't need a website any longer because their digital advisors had recommended just using Facebook and social media platforms. And I went, I went, I said, you're mad. I said, so you don't, you, so you're putting your whole future, your company's future on other people's platforms that you do not own or have any right to. And, you know, this is what digital, some of the digital experts are actually telling corporate clients and other businesses what to do. And it's suicide. <laughs> Total suicide. Totally. Totally. So then, so then in terms of the niche, so you've really found this niche in terms of cluster domains are really focusing on uh, display or names that contain like display, hotel, um, 
what else did you say? Car hire, jewelers. Car hire and jewelers. We've started doing, we've got a couple of nice jeweler ones. We're on goldjeweler.com. We're working on that. But here's another example that we bought a couple of months ago. Um, we've got a couple of Monaco domains. You know, obviously, Monaco is a high class area in Europe. Right. Uh, and I think one of the first names that we bought was Monaco Car Hire to go with our Car Hire Network. And I liked her, that kit, I liked that kind of name. And then when I was looking at a search, Monaco Car Sales came up uh, as a drop. Again, we picked that up as a drop. That was owned by a German company that went into um, receivership or whatever. So we picked that name up. And then about six months ago, um, I was doing a search for other Monaco names and I picked up um, monocojeweler.com and monocojewelers.com. And I went, wow, who, you know, these names were getting used by businesses in the States, et cetera. And we managed to pick up the, the dot coms. And so that starts build, that starts building up a nice wee portfolio of the French Riviera or the Côte d'Azur um, location. So we started buying up other names. And a few months ago as well, we picked up a fantastic domain for the area, hotel name, um, Côte d'Azur Hotels. Dot com and um, I was so pleased at getting that name because we've got other names in that area, hotel names in that area, but that was so pleasing to get that name. Um, and you'll see the sites up, um, it's, it's being developed, it's looking good. And I get a buzz when I get those kind of names when you're waiting for one name to come up that fits part of the jigsaw, and then you get another one that comes up. And um, we picked up, I think it was. Hotels at Santropay.com. Another oh. nice name. Another nice name, Alwyn, as a a, a, um, a hand reg domain. So I don't know what it is, but I seem to be very, very lucky registering the sort of names that I like. Um, and maybe I'm just lucky at getting them at the right time. But I'm not buying names just for the sake of buying names. They've got to be part of a strategy um, sort of thing. And that's what I look at. I'll give you an example. Um, we, we um, a couple of months ago, I was in Florence and Pisa, and before we went, the wife went, "Right, do you have any Florence names?" And I went, "No." <laughs> and she went, "Do you have any Pisa names?" And I went, "No." She went, "Do you have any Tuscany names?" And I went, "No." And she went, "Do you have any Italy names?" And I went, "No." And then she went at us. And how many of them will you have when we get back? <laughs> <laughs> now, I already own pizzaholiday.com. You can see that there's a site up just now, and we're still working on it. But I was lucky enough to get pizzaholiday.com as a registration fee domain name. Now, I put a value on that domain name straight away. If I was to flip it, I'd be looking for about two to three thousand pounds easy for that name. Because the amount of people that go to Pisa for a holiday um, is astronomical compared to other other places. So these are the sort of names that I like to try and pick up for registration fee. So you hit an interesting point there, made me kind of reflect for a moment of it's not, I mean, while yes, it is about the town or the city's population, it's probably more so important to you about how many people are coming there as tourists that le le either leads you or guides you in terms of your buying and development habits. Totally. I look at the, the I look at the stats, how many, you know, the stats are all there online, how many people are going to that location and that place. And then when you're at that place, you know, one of the things that we, we've started really doing is we will go to the place now, see what it's like, take hundreds of photographs, walk the streets, and then we'll come back and buy the domain name or try and get the domain name that fits it. And um, that's probably the thing that we've started doing this year. Um, <clears throat> you know, we, we started it by accident a few years back, in, about, a couple, about four years back, where we went to a place in France, which I had never heard of, called Carcassonne. And um, we went to Carcassonne for four days. Unknown to me, there's a medieval evil castle 
and it's called Carcassonne Castle. Hmm. And Carcassonne Castle is one of France's top 10 tourist attractions. Um, so we went there, beautiful town, came back to Glasgow. First thing I'd done, got on the computer, who owns the domain name? I want to buy it. And it was available for hand registration. Wow. Right. Um, so we've got the, the domain name, the website's up on it. And we run the Twitter account for Carcass and Town. So I've got the LinkedIn company page for it as well. So we had that was basically our first French website, if you know what I mean, right? So we came back to Glasgow six months later, back to Carcassonne. So second time in Carcassonne, we decided to go down the coast to a place called Adj. Um jumps in a train for a day, jumps down to Adge and um, another small village. And then we got the bus down to the, the beach um, and that was called Cap Diage. In Cap Diage, we've got a big giant marina and there's fantastic beaches. Um, it's got a lot going for it. So we came back to Glasgow, exact same thing again. What did we do? Um, went to look at who owned Adge, Adge Hotel, the hotel Nadge was owning that. Um, went and registered capdiagehotel.com and capdiagehotels.com for registration fee again. They call it luck. So, um, both the sites up, you'll see the sites are up for the Cap Diage Hotel. Um, six months later, the hotel that owned Adge Hotel went barely up in Adge. Um, the domain name dropped and we picked up Adge Hotel. So that started giving us a network of um, into France with that one little network of um, domains. And we have continued to buy. That's led us across to the Côte d'Azur. Um, in the Côte d'Azur, we've started to buy up um, St. Maximum Hotel Saint, um, and a few other um, hotel names that are um, what you call the French Riviera. And that then started, and that has grown as part of our network. And so getting the Côte d'Azur hotels has allowed us to build up a nice wee network. Now we're starting in Italy, and over the period of the next year, we'll buy up Italian sort of domains that we're looking for as part of our network. Interesting. So then with Aj Hotel, so like how much did you pick it up for? Uh, $10. So it was like a closeout then, or a red fee? Reg fee, yeah. So then now you hit another point in terms of like, so you're creating these networks. And so I just pulled up Glasgow.com. And so I'm just looking at it. And then I uh, just pulled up, let's see here, Pisa Holiday. Yeah. So I noticed there, like if I scroll down to the bottom of those, like I see, so it looks like you're linking between these sites. Links are links, no matter what way you look at it. And if you take Google, I think last year Google had, um, what, four and a half thousand updates. Now, at the, at the end of the day, as long as there's good content, as long as there's content on it, as long as we put our own images on it, some stock images, the majority of it is our own, it's, it's not a one-page website. They're not two-page websites, Alvin. These will end up being 50-page websites and 100-page websites because we'll continue adding to them. Um, sort of thing. So it's they're at the early stages just now, but by the end of this year, uh, um, you will see the whole lot up the way they should have been um, done. And um, I've discovered when, you know, the cross-linking that we do, I don't, we stop at a certain amount, but we don't link to anyone else's websites unless it's one of your affiliates or anything else. So when you get that cross-linkage, um, especially with the Glasgow one, um, when we start putting another 1,000 pages on Glasgow, uh, just a massive amount of boost. But at the end of the day, it's what value do you put on a click? You know, who are you right. building for? I'm building for my advertisers and my customer base. I don't give a damn, to be perfectly honest with you, about Google or anybody else because the majority of my traffic is 100%, is, is majority is, is organic. I don't care where we rank in the search engines because we get traffic. You know, I've got um, 16 years of visitor traffic from um, Glasgow and the Glasgow network. And because no one has really done what we have done, 
therefore, I'll not have, you know, nobody can tell me um, what we are doing wrong because nobody's doing what we do, if you see where I'm coming from. Right. And, there, and there's been no negative impact. None. None whatsoever. What are what are the numbers look like from a revenue standpoint in terms of like some of the development sites? What what in fact one of the posts that I posted on LinkedIn was here's the latest domain team. <laughs> um, we're starting at the beginning of the year. Um, Farrell Hotel F A R O, no FarrellHoliday.com, and I like putting posts up on LinkedIn like that and saying here we are. I've created the Twitter account already. Uh, Feral Holiday uh, at Feral Holiday. I've created the LinkedIn page. We are starting from 00, 2020, way this domain name. There's no history of it on um, web archive or anything else. And I put in my post, I'm putting this post up just now so that when I go back to it in a year's time, you will be able to see the progress that this website has taken from being a hand registered domain name to a fully fledged business online. And I'm quite happy to post the stats and let people see my stats, Alvin. Um, <clears throat> because I get some folk going like that, ah, it's impossible that you get that. And I'll go, no, I'll send you other stats. So it's, um, I'm a firm believer in being honest and above board and letting people see what we get. Um, because I own the domain names, we build the sites up, we've got all the social cloud. It's a strategy, and it's a strategy that's worked well for me over the last 20 years. Gotcha. So then if we were to take something like Glasgow Hotels, I would imagine that there, I mean, how many hotels are in the city of Glasgow? There's probably about 70, 70 to 100, I would say. And then from, so you have 70 to 100 hotels. So then if, and I'm assuming that you go out to probably each one of those hotels. It doesn't work. They don't get it. Oh, wow. Why not? Because they just don't get it. So we just stick with booking.com. Um, the, this is what the hotels don't get. The hotels don't understand domaining. They don't understand geo domains. Mm. Um, and I think it's due to the fact that some of them have been given wrong advice. And and we got to the stage where we don't go in and see hotels any longer. It's If they don't get it, they don't get it. And I'm not wasting my time. The hotels don't realise as well that it's not all about them. To me, I'm an e-commerce expert. So to me, retail is far bigger than the hotel industry when it comes to Glasgow. Um, you know, so it's uh, there's a there's a bit of snobbery with hotels or the hospitality industry, um, where certain people in the hospitality industry think that we should not own the name of the city, um, and that gets my goat because these same people have never put any money in their own pockets to enhance the city if you know what i mean right um sort of thing but they're good to criticize so we sort of just um, have got to the stage where we just do our own thing um we get the business we get the traffic um and i say to folk we don't own any hotels but we get a lot of hotel bookings we don't own any car hires but we get car hire bookings and it sort of it, it just gives them that puzzled look where they just don't get it and i love it when they don't get it because it so allows me to um, pick up certain names and, and get business the, the way that we do it, you know? Interesting. So then it's really about that you have built, even though it's about tourism and you're giving folks information about each city or each city uh, service, I, so then it's really that you've, and I think you said you you worked out a deal or some odd other with booking, so it's really that you're more lead gen to booking and driving leads there than it is really to the hotel. Yeah, it's, it's a bit like lead gen, and it's an ideal business if you think about it in one way, whereupon you've got the asset that brings in the traffic that people book, um, because for 20 years we had been banging our head um, trying to explain to people what it was, and it just over here they don't get it yet. Alvin. So, you know, a small percentage do, but the majority of them don't. And if you keep hitting your head up against the wall, you just turn <laughs> in and go, you know what, guys? I'm, I'm getting old in the tooth for this. I don't need that. Um, we'll just continue doing my own thing. And that's the, that's what I love doing. 
I, you know, I love it when somebody says to us, yeah, we're, we've got them business and stuff like that, but I'm not going to four or five meetings for folk to have a discussion about a discussion about a discussion. Um, <laughs> and, and that's what you get. And it's just, it's not my style. You know, I want to go to a meeting with a person, you say to a person, this is what we can do. Do you want us to do it? Yes or no? You know, no, let's have another meeting next week and then another meeting after that and another meeting. Because by that time, I've already went and bought the names and the, you know, I look at myself as being a speedboat and they're super tankers. And by the time these super tankers have done a left turn, I've done a figure eight ten times and I'm way ahead with them because I've already <laughs> went and registered the means and worked on the strategy. Interesting. So then in terms of so so in terms of the deal, now that you figured out, hey, I can't necessarily go to the in hotel, but I have a go between, if you will, in terms of leads. So then how do you structure those type of deals? Is it a per lead or is it based on traffic or what? Yeah, is it's, it? it's based on a percentage of the sale or the booking. Okay. And that's the same way with car hire. Or car hire sites, it's a, a percentage of the um the the booking. Don't get me wrong. I would love to, if you know, um, being old school, I would have loved to have done deals and say to folk, "This is what we can do." But it's um, certain businesses appreciate it. Certain businesses don't. Right. And um, yeah, it's it's um, it's it's one of these things where, upon as an outsider, I can you know. Um, I look at it and it's all about the visitor numbers. It's about the strategy. It's about the, you know, that to me is if, if you're a, a business and your job is to get customers for your business, then that's exactly what we do. Because we are the only probably one of the firms like yourself that you go and buy the names that get the traffic, you build that. It. It's all 100% organic and that's what you're doing to get customers traffic. And that's exactly what we've been doing for the last 20 years. And so in terms of the, I guess you'd say in terms, so in terms of the structure of that deal, like I know that there are going to be listeners who are likely hearing what you're saying and they're like, oh man, I know a perfect geographic location that I could go and begin to work out this same sort of strategy. So how would you advise them to to structure the deal in terms of percentage? Like how much of the percentage of that lead are you getting? You get... If, if you look at it, you actually get a no bad per, um, percentage of it. You know, it's 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 a fair amount when you consider um, what you're getting from the major players. Because as long as you're bringing in those sales, um, you'll get a good percentage. That that's it. You know, it's a mixture between a percentage of the sales and advertising. I would say that that brings in, um, you know, um, the business. It's a uh, it's just one of these things that we have, that because of the scale that we are going at, um, I prefer um, putting up the affiliates, which is fast and furious, that are very good to the sort of domain names that we own. Um, we've done a deal with a helicopter company for our helicopter hires. We've done a deal for jet hire with our corporate jet hire. So we hope to do one with um, a jewelers for some of the jewelry names that we've got. Etc. So it's you know some of this takes time um, with regards to getting it, but it's all part of the plan and the structure. And you know it's certain companies that will be glad that you're doing it because they don't have to pay you anything. You're going on the onus of the domain name as the brand that you've got, and the consumer is coming to your website um, and hopefully um, filling in that application form or doing that booking. And it's just a numbers game. Interesting. So then, now you mentioned, uh, I believe it's helicopterhires.com and then corporatejethire.com. So, like, obviously, you're looking at the tourism side of that, but how did you get into that side of the business? <laughs> That's a straight right. The corporate jet hire, if you remember when the financial crash happened, um, we used to own a lot of... Um, what you call um, like sort of fast box American um, sort of um, loan websites and a lot of mm -hmm. UK websites doing loans, mortgages, and finance. <laughs> and what happened was when the financial crash happened, all those loan sites that we owned went belly up, basically. 
And luckily enough, we had other businesses um, for it. And I thought that the corporate jet hire market crashed away back then. So we picked up, I picked up as a registration fee again, corporatejethire.com. <laughs> and it took us eight years. We held on to it. Um, eight years later, we were still trying to get deals done and we couldn't get a deal done. And we finally got a deal done with a, a company. And when we got the contract, in the contract it, that said helicopter hires as well, right? And I went, oh, brilliant. We don't have any helicopter hire. So <laughs> I phoned up the guy who owned helicopter hire, the, the, the main domain, and he was wanting, I think back then, about two years ago, the guy on the phone says, I'm looking for 150000 for for the domain name Helicopter Hire. I mean, I right. So I just done a search. As soon as I put the phone down, um, typed in a, don't know who is on, who owns Helicopter Hires. And it was available for registration fee. So for $10, yeah, I, I picked up helicopterhires.com. Um, <laughs> so... When I bought that name, straight away, that's a global name for all the helicopter hires globally. And um, I was working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on the site at the moment. If you have a look at it, you'll see it's the front page is partly built. We're using stock images and stuff like that. And I've not really investigated the helicopter hire business, but I was looking at the Grand Canyon ones and everything else in New York thingies. And I went, wow. That's another fantastic name where it would be a fantastic business to turn into a, a, a global helicopter hire firm. And that the helicopter hire goes well with the corporate jet hire, that goes well with our monocle car hire, that goes well with our, um, our yachting names that we bought as well, like um, my bear uh, yacht brokers, can yacht brokers, and um, San, was it San Tropez? yacht brokers and my bear yacht brokers so each part of these becomes a wee part of a network which is part of a bigger network which becomes bigger and then eventually it off was in and folk go how did you manage that well i've been working on it for three years buying that name there to go with that name and that name to go with that name and it's just you know um waiting for the right time to get the the name is a good drop instead of putting out a couple of grand for it have you tried that same type of a strategy I yes. inside the U.S.? Yes, you have. We own, I was at the NameCons conference when it was in Vegas two years ago or three years ago, and I, I went and registered before I went to the conference. Um, Las Vegas Airport Car Hire .com, Las Vegas Airport Car Rental .com, and Las Vegas um, taxis.com. I think it was Las Vegas Taxis or Las Vegas Airport Taxis. And um, I've already sold the taxi network to another domainer. Um, mm -hmm. But we've got that. I like having the Las Vegas Airport car hire, Las Vegas Airport car rental. And because we've got a car sales network, we I bought VegasCarSales.com, which I got as a registration fee, which I think is a fantastic name. And um, we also own names like Shops New York, which I think is a fantastic name. And we've got the Twitter account. I think we've got about 1,100 people in New York that follow that Twitter feed. And so we've got that. Then we've got like Shops to buy. So we've got a, a small shopping network um, to go with it. But we also own um, like Dubai Airport Car Hire, um, Costa Blanca, uh, car hire, um, Kuwait Airport car hire, Bahrain Airport car hire. So we're now buying up a lot of airport car hire locations as part of our, another part of a wee network to go with a hotel network. Interesting. So have you noticed a difference? Because, you, you know, because sometimes you start basing, I guess you'd say, principles that you would apply to geo do, domain development. So have you noticed any difference in terms of developing in Scotland versus developing here in the States? Yeah, big, big difference. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm quite lucky where upon, and I think everyone makes this mistake, and this is one of the things um, with regards to what I should have done. Um, when I first started off, 
all my domains were all about Glasgow in Scotland and obviously some down south. And even when we started doing developing, it would take us, it takes the same amount of time to build a website for a small town like a broth in Scotland um, is what it does to do a site for New York. So what happened was um, that I discovered because we're doing mass development and we I made, again, the brutal change and you've got to be brutal. We, let's scrap this. Um, and I done it, I scrapped 900.co.uk's that we had spent years buying up, building, and we scrapped a whole lot. And I'm down to about 50.co.uk's, um, and we focus more on the dot coms um, sort of thing. And we've got about 1,200 dot coms in total. Um, but we just had to be brutal, um, and we now look at the size of the, the we look at the places for being tourism related or population wise. Um, and if I can pick up the right kind of name, um, you know, as a drop and wait three months or six months or whatever, then I'm happy to do that. Um, because it's the advantage that I have is being in Europe compared to the American market where most Americans will sit and look for American names, but they're missing out the rest of like Europe and stuff like that. Um, and I think as a European demeanor, um, I've got that advantage whereupon um, I shouldn't be picking up the sort of names that I mentioned earlier um, because there's a lot smarter um, demeanors with better technology than what I've got for picking up these drops. And that's why I think it's quite a, still, it's still a fantastic industry to get in. And if I was starting up new, I would be looking at drops, um, basically. In terms of development time, so I know that you said that you had the 900 sites that you had to scrap, and you had to scrap that L that effort to kind of, uh, I guess, pivot and redirect your focus. But in terms of today, now, how have you managed to, I guess, reduce the time it takes to develop sites? Because obviously, we've talked about a number of sites. And so the, the question that I'm sitting there going is, how in the world are you able to turn these sites out one after the other right, in less I'm, time than what it took? I'll tell you, this is um, what I'm using, right? Before all your stuff was PHP, and the problem with the PHP, yeah, this brilliant back end system, blah, 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 etc. But the problem that you've got is when you've got that built and then you realize that you need to do a wee change on it, and then it's, you know, it's a pain in the backside. So I'm using, I've tried different WordPress um, back end themes, and I'm using a program that was created by a guy in India called blocks builder.com. So if you have a look at that, um, it costs like $200 for an unlimited license. You can build as many websites as you want. All the websites that you saw that we have mentioned, Alwyn, has been built using that. Now, <coughs> the guy's got a YouTube channel. You can get and watch it. And the first week that I done, I went in and watched how he was building the websites and getting to know it. After a week... Um, I started building main sites and it's like everything else. Um, get in and using the program and doing it. Um, as a, it. And because of all the different box sizes and structures, I think it's fantastic. So I've got used to using it and building it and tweaking it. Uh, and I'm totally loving it. So I can basically um, sit. If you look at Cote d'Azur Hotels, that took me the front page. Um, took me, what, about half a morning to do. Hmm. Um, if, if you know what I mean. So um, if you look at the I, Ibiza Town Hotels, um, IbizaTownHotels.com, that's, um, that's got all the hotel listings in it, so you'll sort of get a better idea of that's one of our near enough 90% finished sites. And you'll see we've got booking.com on it. We've got the stock photography. And we've actually got some of our own images because we've been to Ibiza, um, take the photographs. We know the place really, really well, and et cetera, et cetera. And it's just getting to do all that stuff um, that allows you to 
build it and see it and, and visualize, visualize what you're wanting to do with it inside your head. So, yeah, I'm loving it because um, it's like the good thing about it is if I get up at, if I'm up at 10 o'clock at night, I may be sitting work for two, three hours and I'll go, which one am I working on? <laughs> and it's like, a, it's like a painting. You know, I'm building 20 or 50 at a time. Wow. And each one of them's got to be different. But similar, but slightly different. Um, different colours, different, you know. And it's just that, you know, then I'll go, it's like, I'd imagine it's like a, a, a painter. You, you know, you're not going to sit and paint until the whole thing's done. You just work on it bit by bit. And eventually, over a couple of weeks, it all starts to format and starts coming together. And then you go, wow, that's starting to look really, really good. And then when you're in check the visitor stats, you can see the stats going up. So you know that what you're doing is working very, very well. Um, sort of thing. So, yeah, it's just a, a continuation of the the building of the, the sites. And, um, you know, once you get past a certain level, it's just a case of adding more images and stuff. And the beauty with it is, if you're there taking your own photographs, you know... You, you've got the information of the stuff that no one else can get because you get the, the photographs of the local buses, the local taxi service, the local um, the local airport. So we're getting all those sort of images that allows you to get um, sort of stuff that no one can get. If you look at the airport page that I've got for I, I, Ibiza Town Hotels, that's a picture of we're on to, that we took you the local bus, the local taxi firms, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and it's that beauty that I love going to the places now and adding in my own images. So, man, that is interesting. So, literally, you've taken instead of you know, let's just say months of development, you've taken it down into weeks, and you're able to scale multiple websites simultaneously. Yep. Uh huh without actually going, okay, I have 150 domains and I need a developer per domain or two developers per domain. Yeah. Wow. And what was the name, what was the name of that site? I be, um, Ibiza town hotels.com. Um, what, what I B I Z A T. Oh, are you talking about, um, blocks, B L O X dash builder.com. So Boulder, B builder B U I L D E R. Oh, okay, gotcha. Dot com. Builder, gotcha. And have a look at it, it's, and it's got lots of lovely wee features, which um, that allow you to build really, really nice present, nice websites. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, it's you know, there's a, there's like maybe a dozen different kinds like that software like that you can you can now use, and. Um, yeah, it's, if this was invented 20 years ago, it would have been fantastic. But it's, um, you know, obviously it, it bolts onto the back of WordPress. It's fantastic to use. And I'm enjoying sitting there. Um, if I get up at five in the morning sometimes, I can, by the time it comes nine o'clock, I've created, um, you know, another front page or another um, website because um, the navigation is so easy to create create the structure, create it, because I've got the plan in my head. I've got the images sitting there. Um, I've got some of the text already there. So it's a case of just gradually building them out. And I know that in a year's time, when, when you're doing 100 sites or whatever else, that those sites are the three-page websites. Every one of these sites will probably be between 100 pages and probably more. Interesting. So then kind of looking forward, so... Like, how lucrative do you think geo development is? Like, looking into the future, is that something that's still a viable option? Oh, it's, of course, it's a viable. It's, it's it's the best option, basically, on the planet, because at the end of the day, um, you know, if you build it, the visitors come. If the visitors come, then the advertisers love it, and it's a, a case of continually building, building out. I've always found that amazing if you take a part page, um, a part page which is a single page does not constitute a website under Google's terms and conditions. A website consists of a minimum three pages. So a part page under Google's own terms and conditions does not constitute a website. So therefore, there's always been a flaw with regards to um, having part pages. And I have never understood why 20 years later that 
most of your part pages for domains are always a single page. You know, somebody should have developed something where upon like this, it creates, you know, the technology is there now to create but domainers should just be able to drag and drop and have their domain names, add in the text, add in the thingies, and that would increase their revenues substantially. So then if, you know, for listeners that are that are wanting to, uh, you know, they, they've sat here and listened to us and they've probably, you know, taken down or jotted down a few notes or different ideas that they have. So, like, what would be your advice to someone that's going, man, I've, I've heard Tommy, I've gone to some of these sites and I want to go do the same thing for another um, area throughout the world. Like, where, where would you recommend that they start? I'd recommend that they start looking at their hometown first to see what's available, um, sort of thing. Um, I'm, I'll always give you free advice. Um, they can contact me. I run the, the Twitter feed at Glasgow, so if they want to ping me there. Um, I run, um, I'm quite thingied on LinkedIn as well, as you know, so they can follow me there. And my email address, my, my Gmail account is domainscott at gmail dot com so they can email me there and i'll gladly connect up with them and answer any questions and stuff like that it's um because at the end of the day i know what it was like 22 years ago when i was starting um <laughs> and it was you know there was a lot of good domainers there that gave it a lot of good valuable information who had already been in the domain industry for five years and four years etc so i you know it's you, you put it out you'll get it back in another way and it's always good to see someone that you've gave a bit of advice to and a bit of help. And then you turn and go, wow, they're, they're, they're actually doing better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good it's good because, you know, it's good kudos to, to, to see. Um, and obviously, sometimes they'll have a different idea. And then you look at it and go, oh, wow, that's interesting. I never thought about that. So it, it enhances both um, both things, if you know what I mean. Right. And so now... Now, what would you say is the greatest challenge about geo domain development? The the, the biggest challenge to me with, with geo um, thing me is you have got to do the homework. You have you know um, you have got to build something that um, that your visitors you, you've there's, you've got to look at it as who are you building the site for, right? Are you building it for Google? No, because no, that's not who you're targeting. So the new Glasgow site that we're building at the moment it is based on building it to have as much info, the info that no one else can do it apart from being a geo developer. It's like listing, you know, we've got photographs of all the cash machines in Glasgow, right? Because that's how sad a person I am. <laughs> we we have got photographs of every taxi rank in Glasgow, and this is another thing that we done because um, Google did not recognise taxi ranks as being locations. So we started adding them into our Google local maps, and Google started coming back and saying, "Okay, we'll add that in as a taxi base. We'll add that in as a taxi base." And then we looked at, there's other things like that where when I go out soon to take photographs, when I do a street, I take photographs of including the bus shelters because people want to know what buses are going where. So there's, you've got to get it to that hyper, hyper level of understanding. Uh, and some of the aspects, Alvin, which I thought was amazing, was I would go in and speak to the, some of the retailers in a, on a street and the retailer at the top end of the street doesn't know the retailer at the bottom end of the street or the middle of the street. And that shocked me. <laughs> and the problem being is, is when you look at it is, most of these retailers, they'll get up in the morning, some of them will go to cash and carries depending on the business, open up their shop at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. They're in there all day, they can't leave. As soon as it becomes 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, they shut up shop, they head home, and that's it. So they don't really get a chance to see who's at the bottom of the street or who's at the, the middle of the street or whatever else. And that surprised me when I was doing my market research. And the new Glasgow site that we are building is um, 
this is another reason why um, we're, we're planning to go in and take photographs, not just of the businesses in the inside, in the outside, but the inside of the business. Um, I put a post up on LinkedIn, I think, um, on Monday or Tuesday, and I said, and it said, my LinkedIn um, local guide, 15 million people had viewed my Glasgow images for Glasgow. That's within two years. So that was only for the outsides of the shops. This year, we are planning to create the pages street by street because here's the thing that we notice. On a street, um, the street will always remain the same, but the businesses are, some businesses will, will go under, but that address, like number 27, will remain 27. So therefore, our new, our new brand is to create Yes, we're now creating the streets, listing all the businesses, and then independently there'll be another search where it's listing the businesses A to Z. But the main priority will be listing the streets A to Z, and it's easy to do. Um, and that's uh, allowing us to... That will create thousands and thousands of sheer organic natural traffic for us. Nice. So then, in terms... So really that the... So listeners, one of the things is that so kind of to sum up what, what Tommy was saying was just basically like you got to know your details. You got to do your homework and know the ins and outs of what you're about to attack. Now, Tommy, would you say like how much time would you say someone should devote to, you know, from buying the domain to developing the site to actually seeing traffic and I guess traffic that is turning profitable revenue? How yeah. much time should they commit what what they should do first is understand the location that they're doing understand their town or their city or the place that they're going to because you might think you understand it if you're born in that place but you don't really because you'll maybe know the area that you came from but you will not know all the other areas and it was a it was eye-opening for me to walk certain streets in other parts of the city. Um, I had people coming out and going, uh, are you for the council? No. Oh, that's great. They, you know, you would get folk coming out saying, why are you taking a photograph of my, you know, my business? And I would explain to them and give them one of my business cards. So it was really, really interesting getting, the, getting to know the streets. And sometimes you're walking a street and you'll discover... There's a big art installation being put at the bottom of the street. And you went, I didn't know about that. So we walk in the streets. I got to see all these wee unique features, these back alleys with works of art in them, um, beautiful architectural buildings, which I'd never seen before. I had never noticed before. So I think take, take two weeks in the summer and walk every street. And you'll lose a lot of weight as well when you're doing it. <laughs> and um, make sure you do it in the summer when it's not too hot or too cold, but just nice. And then um, you will enjoy walking about, especially when you've got your camera taking photographs of every one of the businesses because you're building up a persona of how many businesses are in that street, what they all do, um, and sort of breaking it up. And you're doing something that no one else will really do because web designers don't do it. The SEO, SEO guys don't do it, but you're a geo developer, and as a geo developer, it's your job to get as much information that no one else has got on your website so that it's 100% unique, and that's what you need to do. So, yeah, so, I mean, really, so, I mean, we're really talking about you're going to have to at least probably commit to a minimum of, uh, a, I would imagine, a couple hyper-focused time frame if you're saying something between probably six to six months to 12 months and it doesn't stop there because you're going to have to keep uh updating it from time to time well that that's the beauty of it that once you build it right that's the easy part it's up and it's running and everything else and um the the good thing about it is this is this is where it gets interesting when you go a year later to walk up that street and you're taking photographs of it you will see certain changes. Um, a small percentage of businesses will go under. So what you're now starting to have is a history of it. So, you know, 
the, we added in the new business that's there on that page and you've kept it all one at the bottom. Or you delete the, you don't delete the page because it's still got history. So people like to view old photographs and, oh, I remember that business. Yeah, you're, you're building up a map of how your business is with regards to um, the city's history. And over a period of time, it becomes a main focal point where folk will go in, oh, I remember them five years ago. I remember them six years ago. It's because no one takes photographs of all the businesses and all the other things and because it, these are all subtle changes that happen over a city over a period of time. Um, but if you're doing it, you're building up a fantastic digital, historic, um, long-term business. And if you've done that for a good few years, then every image has its own page. If you think about that, even just putting Google AdWords on it, it would become a very, very nice um, earner. But you're, you're creating something that um, local people will go into just to even look and view. Uh, and the more people that do that, the more Google gives you kudos for doing it. Nice, nice. So then wrapping up here with the last question. So, I mean, obviously you've done this for 20 years and counting. Now, in terms of, of all of your varied experience of investing as well as development, like if you had to do it all over again, would you do anything different and why or why not? Yeah, if I was to start all over again, I would have concentrated on um, dot coms. Or, why you know, that? Um, just for the simple reason, um, with regards to the tourism markets that I'm, that I'm aiming for, um, I think the the global market, if it's a city or a town, um, and visitors are coming into that, they're, they're going to more likely go to the dot-com, I think, for the traffic. Um, and I think the, the dot-com is the, the, the main brand for the, for, a, for a city. That's, that's really hot. You know, or the country code. The country code, I think, comes second, um, sort of thing. You know, but if you can get the the country code and the dot com, then that's that. You know, that's absolutely fantastic. You know. Nice, nice. Well, so I mean, with that, I mean, I guess, is there anything else that you like to share with the listeners? Yeah, don't listen to a word that I say. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I still want to grab those names that I was talking about for $10. <laughs> he's, he's expounded on all of his knowledge over the last 90 minutes, and then we arrive to the very end, and it's like, yeah, don't listen to me. I, who, who knows what I'm talking about? I think it's totally crucial. When you've got the domain, then aim for the other social platforms to go with it because it adds value and right. branding to the domain name that you've got. So I, I like Twitter and I like LinkedIn. I think um, LinkedIn is so undervalued, so I always go in and create the company page um, for that domain. Um, and the company page is the only thing that I think that gets picked up by Google. So, you, And the fact that you're getting a link for the company page, um, you don't have to have a company to have a company page. You've got the domain, set it up, get the keyword for it, um, and you'll do well with that. And the same with Twitter. Um, there is another technique of um, how to get the Twitter accounts if someone else has got it, and they're not, they've not been using it for a long time. We'll maybe use that in another another talk um, with regards to how to do it, because it takes about another 10, 15 minutes. Um, so that's what I like. I like getting the Twitter account. I like getting the LinkedIn page. I'm not a big fan of Facebook, but I, you know that's because you, you, you go for the social <laughs> platforms that you like, and that's what I've done, Alvin. Well, nice. Well, Tommy, I mean, with that, we're out of time. So thank you again for joining us today and sharing your entrepreneurial journey of investing as well as geo domain development and how to turn those into profitable, proven businesses. No, well, thanks very much, Alvin, for the, take the time for the interview. And I will, that's the wife just pinged me, so I'm yeah. going to sign off. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you later. So listeners, thank you for tuning in to kickstartcommerce.com where we share search marketing and domain name strategies to help grow your business. 
Please subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or Podbean. Last but not least, please visit kickstartcommerce.com to subscribe to the newsletter sharing tips and tricks about the disciplines of digital strategy. Thanks, and that's all for now.